Welcome to the Chop Shop. My name is Benny, and as you can see, I am not alone. When I started this podcast, I wanted it to be kind of a place where we can have conversations, talk about life, talk about just faith, family, like really all these different things that we experience in life. And so today, I have a really good buddy of mine, and it is Mr. Jay Perry. Jay, bro, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time. You're a busy man. We're going to get into that. Mm. (laughs) And so (laughs) I really appreciate you like coming here. Um, So for people who may may not be familiar Mm. with you, you're a producer, you're an artist. Um, Mm. Here in our area, you know, you're, you're moving, man. Like you're, your work is getting out there, whether you're helping other artists or you're doing your own stuff. Um, But kind of give us like, just kind of like a beginning of your story like what was your your home like growing up like what was what was your home life what was your childhood like well uh i i was a child of like eight kids i think eight? so yeah so split family so okay growing up my mom my mom has six kids yeah my stepdad which is like a father to me he had two kids already as well okay my father had three, including me, and then had two extra. So wow. it was just a big, big family, a lot yeah. of siblings, a yeah. whole lot of siblings. Um, you know, my I was always in a, as a child, I was always in a split house, you know, yeah. spend time at mom's, spend time at dad's, back and forth, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, so that was, but to me it was normal. It wasn't like, okay, you know, some, some people deal with that and then, but they have both their parents in the house until they're a certain age and then yeah. they split and then they have to adjust right, right. to the living difference. But for me, it was always that way. Okay. So, you know, growing up, it, that was just a normal, just a normal thing, you know? Yeah. And then, but I was definitely a troublemaker. I was definitely, <laughs> you know, definitely <laughs> doing things that I shouldn't do. Yeah. Um, looking back now as an adult, you know, you, you notice certain things and you think, sure. oh, okay, I was doing this for acceptance. I was doing this to get attention from my parents or, right. you know, or, you know, cause I always, I wanted to live with my mom when I was in trouble with my dad and I wanted to live with my dad when things were, you know, so yeah. it was, a, yeah. it was a lot of that, but, um, yeah, I, I had a, I had a really good childhood. Um, I had, my parents are very supportive. I, they yeah. supported me in anything that I did. I had every endeavor you could imagine sports um skateboarding wanted to be i had i was in bands i was yeah. like <laughs> i was just doing everything and my yeah. parents supported everything that i did like if That's i wanted cool. to have a mohawk they would let me cut my hair like <laughs> if i wanted to have like i had dreadlocks at one point okay. you know like i was just supported supported with every decision that i made so that yeah. was you know i but I didn't really recognize it at the time. Like as a kid, I just thought that was normal. Right, right. So I yeah. meet some of my friends and they're like, man, my parents are so strict. Like, yeah. <laughs> they won't let me do this. They won't let me do that. Yeah. And my parents, they weren't they weren't necessarily too strict on me, you know? Yeah. And um, which at the time was a blessing because, yeah, my mom let me do whatever, you know? And But looking back, there were that's what built my relationship with my mom that gave me that right. like comfortability with her that made me yeah. love her so fully because not only did I know she was my mom but she was my best friend right and someone I could turn to and talk to about anything I wasn't afraid to have that conversation with her mm-hmm. about about anything so yeah my childhood but I got in trouble a lot did a lot of um not so smart things would get suspended from school a lot yeah would you know doing yeah <laughs> doing some use your yeah. imagination you know yeah yeah you know so um uh so anyway so at one point when i was like 13 or 14 i moved in with my grandma so okay. that's in santa rosa so i lived in windsor my most of my childhood i was born in eureka randomly you know wow. i was born in humble county yeah went to school in sebastopol for a little bit um started going to school in windsor and then lived in windsor until i was like 14 lived with lived with my grandma and then um so then i didn't really know my grandma like that like i didn't really have a Mm. relationship with her but now like i was i was in trouble at the time my grandma like taught me a lot guided me a lot she's the one that really like instilled in me like foundation like handle your business like don't 
wait till it's last minute like yeah. handle and like really instructed a lot of things in me and instilled a lot of uh discipline in me you know um i was i grew up always working i was always working whether it's at like the deli with my dad or yeah. going to the uh, auto body with my dad and then you know i've had plenty and plenty of jobs so that instilled like a lot of discipline and and whatnot but yeah i yeah, I had a good, I had a good childhood. Yeah, it just a a lot of the things that weren't good were just based on my decisions. But overall, yeah. like definitely blessed. Definitely had a blessed um, family, a big family. But you know, very supportive, very loving. Um, obviously, yeah. we had struggles, and obviously, like nothing was perfect, and and whatnot. But overall, definitely had a had a good good childhood for sure so you grew up in like a like a they call it a blended family where you have like different like step brothers or yeah. step siblings or half siblings yeah. or whatever and did everybody get along like pretty well yeah so that was that was the weirdest thing to me like now that i look back because yeah. i was taught like this isn't your step brother this is your brother yeah this isn't your well i only had i only technically only had two step siblings everyone else was a half sibling but okay it feels weird even saying it now right, because sure. it was instilled in us like that's not your half brother that's yeah. your brother like yeah, yeah. you were you're not separated in any type of way like this is your family and i mean i like my i mean you you know this my my f- brothers and sister like they're not white you know what i mean yeah, like so right. i i i even like dealt with being a kid like people not even thinking we were related right you know yeah. what i'm saying like people not even like Oh, you're just you're just saying like, oh, that's your brother, you yeah, know. But it's right. like, no, it's my <laughs> actual brother. So that added like a part of that whole like half brother, step brother type type thing. But yeah, overall it was yeah it was a blended blended family. But definitely blessed that we had that like instilled in us of like, no, this is your yeah your family family. Like okay, so and and so out of that, like, where does so you're like I said, you're a producer, you're an artist, right? You work with other artists, mm-hmm. you help develop their sound, and then you also have uh, your own thing going on now. Um, you have your own project, your own EP. But take me back to where like you really fell in love with music. What were like some of the inspirations? Who put that in you, or did you just kind of stumble upon that? Like, how did that kind of start? Yeah, um, the music was early. Like super early, yeah. so I recorded my first song when I was nine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and I was playing. I was playing on the 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 Phantoms, the football, t- the Santa Rosa Phantoms. Okay, and I think they were like here and gone pretty quick. I don't know how many seasons <laughs> they have, but I played on. I played on the Phantoms, and me and my sister made a song, a football song. Right, it was okay. just all about football. And I had been writing music for a while. Like my family noticed that. I I don't know. I loved music so much, and I was around such a different variety of music like my dad he he had like most like pop like punk rock type yeah. like all the way from like sublime to like some 41 and like yeah. rob's on like all like from metal to like soft punk you know yeah. and then yeah. my pops was like he's from la like west coast yeah. la you know uh, everything you can think of so you know he's big e40 big you know all yeah. west coast music and just like old school but i i was really into like 50 cent eminem like yeah. back like early 2000s okay. um so i had been writing music since i was a little kid made my first song at nine and i remember i was on the field playing and i heard the song come on mm-hmm. like on the big speakers at santa rosa high school and um i remember just being a little kid bro on the football field hearing my song being played and i was like this is crazy like i I made it you know (laughs) (laughs) i made it like i did it so you know after that i didn't i wasn't recording all the time i recorded in my one of my cousin's boyfriend's janky studio in his garage like Mm -hmm. it wasn't like a big studio nice studio nothing but that was like my first time like actually experiencing that you know and then fast forward some some years was always writing music but i i my main like focus was sports like i really wanted to make it in sports i really wanted to go to the league whether that was football or baseball um but music was always something that yeah. that i loved by the time i was 14 
I was continuing. I was always writing. By the time I was 14, I ended up at Chops Teen Club. They had a music studio there. Yeah. But it was only open once a week. Right. And I was going to school in Windsor, but living in Santa Rosa. So a, a friend and a friend of mine, we would ride the bus here, get off at the mall, walk to Chops, and record. But they had like a band in there, like drums and guitars. Like they would be playing band. And the engineer was like, I still am in contact with him today. He's a cool guy. And um, he was like, I don't want to stop you guys. So you yeah. guys can keep going. So I have like <laughs> old songs where it's like there's drums in the background yeah. like playing because it's bleeding through. But that turned into every Tuesday we were there recording all these songs that I would sit up and write. Yeah. And it was just, I was just at my grandma's house. So I would come home from school. I had my, my I think, iPod or little laptop or something. I'd find beats and I would just write and write and write go record all of them on Tuesday. Then we were like just trying to get in the studio as much as possible. And the engineer was like, look, we can only really do one day a week. Yeah. But if you get this little interface and you get this little mic and you yeah. get a little laptop, you could just have it at your house. Right. So then that happened. And then, like I said, I was at my grandma's, got the interface and the mic and then just started going crazy um, all the way through high school. It was so, like that. So quick question. What, yeah. what was the interface that you used then? At it had time. to have been M Audio. It okay. had to have been like an old M Audio. I remember it was it was uh, like a lighter blue with gray trim. Mm -hmm. it was, that had to have been an M Audio. And what was the uh, the program that you used on the computer then? It was Pro Tools. Pro Tools. Yeah, okay. I think it was so like the cheap Pro Tools. Here's a funny story: is that like when I was about fourteen, fifteen, I thought it would be really cool to be a rapper too. Come on. Uh, and so um, <laughs> I did. Right and. Uh, I messed around a little bit, but the we didn't. I didn't use the interface. This must have been, uh, oh geez, this probably was like 2004, maybe. And so what we did, my wife's probably smirking because she. <laughs> <laughs> um, what we did is we got uh, this free program on our computer. It was uh, Acid, okay, and then uh, the 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 microphone that we got. We went to Target and bought this like twenty dollar like the computer used to have a microphone that looked like just like a pencil that would just yeah stick and it had out. the little thing on the end yeah <laughs> and so we bought one of those bro and we laid so many tracks down with that equipment right there right. and so just hearing you t say that story took me back but our but we didn't have an interface or anything bro we just went straight Spoke like straight to the twenty dollar microphone into the Sony Acid yeah yeah they had they had all types of like free free um audacity i remember yeah. using that yeah 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 and we, yeah it was it was fun times <laughs> it was definitely fun times okay so you you fell in love with the production side writing making music so much that you went ahead and invested in your own stuff at home yeah. right yeah. and i'm sure as this is happening you're making connections you're making friends people yeah. have the same interests yeah uh, really honestly bro it was early like from like for the first couple of years, it was just me, my best friend, Sadiq, and like maybe like one or two other friends. Okay. And it was just us. And it was like always recording. It was really just me and Sadiq. That was like the biggest, yeah. the biggest friend. And then my boy, Kevin, he was, he was there a lot too. But we were just recording all the time, just us. And then eventually, because I'm talking, we got a mic and an interface, but I didn't use EQ. Right, right, I didn't yeah. use no, EQ, no <laughs> compression, probably for like five years of making music and i didn't i didn't mix a thing i just press record and yeah. change the volume right right and um but eventually yeah like eventually got friends you know started started having friends that made music as well people knew me for making music people yeah. knew me as the guy who made music and then getting into high school um i remember my freshman year i i got a lot of the songs were from chops i got it i burned it on a cd i called it just another j wrote it on the thing <laughs> and i went around school selling them yeah and i remember i i made a couple hundred bucks i bought like a nixon watch and like to okay. me like at the time that was my rolex you know yeah. like that was like man i made this off music yeah that was like the sure. first time i was like okay this is and someone actually my a good friend of mine he came to me like not too long ago and was like 
you remember this? And he had the CD. Really? And he gave it to me. And I didn't even have one because I got wow. rid of all of them. Yeah. So, yeah, he blessed me with that. That was pretty cool. Okay, but- another funny story, dude. I also made a CD. All right? This is not This is not to say that I'm at your level, bro, okay? This is just because it's funny. And I also made a CD. And I, I had a friend of mine at church that had a nice camera and uh took you know took pictures so we made an album cover we like yeah. burned a bunch of cds and then burned a bunch of copies of the cover and like actually made it look pretty legit and i went to church and uh i sold them at church i made some pretty good money <laughs> i didn't go. i didn't get a nixon I, I i think i ended up spending it on food honestly oh, bro hey that's fine but yeah that's fine. but yeah man so it's, anyway it's, that's that's yeah <laughs> i didn't do the cover though i didn't do i literally yeah. sharpied it <laughs> <laughs> this was about like 2009 yeah i think okay. i was a freshman 2009 i don't know if anybody has a copy of mine i hope not because i <laughs> i don't want, want that thing to ever surface back up bro it's it's kind of that's, embarrassing that's but how I feel. That's it's how I feel i'm too. like you know i was like 15 yeah. you know so um okay so you're you're making your own music uh it, it seems like you know it's something that you really enjoy doing at what point are you like I'm, I want to go after this. This is what I want to do. Like, not just for yeah. fun, but like, I, yeah. and sure, like getting a, a watch from it is nice, yeah. but like you, this is how I want to make my living. You know, yeah. this is the career I want to choose. Yeah. Like, at what point did you make that decision and what did you do? To be honest, I I have this like part of me, like no matter what I do, I just go super hard at it. Like, yeah. it's hard for me. I'm either all the way in something or I'm yeah. all the way out. And it was I had like a few different areas in my life where it was like I was all the way into this, then I was all the way into this, and I was all the way into that, and then I would jump back and forth. It was yeah. music, sports, and then just being a hoodlum. So it was like yeah. I was always like going back and forth to to both of those. But even when I was making music, I think I wanted to play sports more. Okay. Right. So, but I was also involved in like kid stuff so it kind of drug me away from sports but it wasn't dragging me away from music because you could be a you could do whatever you want and make music right? yeah right so but when it came to sports going into f- my freshman year i think my last season i was playing on the windsor nights and i broke my collarbone i remember mm-hmm. in practice broke my collarbone and then that was like i'm never playing sports again yeah that was like my my moment where i was like okay it was at one point it was like do i do music do i do sports i kind of want to do both but i i'm really good at sports like i'm yeah. really good at football i'm really good at baseball i could i can make it and then it was like that ended for me and then it was like okay now that right. made the decision for me okay but on the flip side i would like i said i was able to be uh a bad kid and still make music where it was harder to be a bad kid and be a star athlete. Right. You know? So it was like, that kind of led me down a slippery slope. But at the same time, I had something that I truly enjoyed and truly loved to do. And I wasn't the kid that was like, I was really like to myself, you know, I was really just at the house making music. I didn't really like to party and do all that stuff, but yeah, that was the moment, bro, where it's like I I got injured in in football and then it was like, okay, music. Yeah. Music's what it is. And that was going that was before I even burned the CD. Right. So then it was like, okay, now I'm going to burn this. I'm going to make music. I'm going to start doing this and and whatnot. but then um yeah, by the time I was like a senior, I was living with a a friend of mine, Marcus, and he we had a studio in his house. Mhm. All of my friends had already graduated high school. I was living with him. I was working at McDonald's. I was going to high school and I was just making music all the time. Like yeah, that was all yeah. I did. And that's when you asked about having friends. We had a music group. We had, you know, eight or nine people in yeah. the group. And it was just make music all the time. That's all we did. Right. Dropping music videos and, and doing all that stuff. And somewhere along the line i think i was around 16 is when i started making beats because i was like i make so much song so many songs and i was just inspired to start making beats and then so around 16 i started making beats they were horrible (laughs) they were super bad like my beats sucked for a long time yeah just like my mixes (laughs) sucked for years and years but um 
yeah that was that was really it and then so by the time i was by the time i was in halfway through high school bro i knew it was like it had to be music yeah you know but that was the thing it was always i'm gonna make it in music i know i'm gonna do something with music so when my music didn't blow up it was like what's happening right like, like i know it's something with music and then that's when the engineering and stuff like it was like oh it is with music but not in the right. way it's helping people with their music that's gonna give me the ability to make music all the time yeah because i was once i got out of school it was like i was working a job and making music yeah I was working a job i would go to work make music go to work make music it was the same thing as when i was a freshman in high school go to school yeah come home and make music like nothing changed except for the fact i'm a little older i understand the music i understand sonics and now i'm getting into like actually mixing and studying the craft and yeah eqs and compressions and actually understanding it and then it just gradually yeah started progressing you know? so let's let's now fast forward to you know kind of the last couple of years now that you're you're doing it full time now right the first time you don't have to work and do music you can just do music that's how you're able to pay your bills so ex talk walk me through what that was like how you got into doing what you're doing full time um because we were just talking about that, and I thought that was super yeah. cool. Um, so just kind of re, you know, retell me that 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 part of it. All right. So I had, like I said, I I was working, and I was jumping job to job to job to yeah. job. It was almost like, all right, something's gonna be better, even though I don't want to do this. Something's gonna be better than this while I chase this, you know. Yeah. And eventually, back to like what I said, my grandma instilled in me. It was like, okay, find this job and then just stay here and yeah. grow and grow here. And then it became more stable. I didn't have to worry about, bro. I would just, I would walk. I worked at BJ's, bro. I remember just walking out and lunch <laughs> and never going back. Like I would do yeah. that all the time. Yeah. And just find a new job. But anyway, I stayed at this job for a while, and then, but I was still making music, right? And then. I was in a I was in a long term relationship and that that was from high school, from graduating high school all the way until I was twenty four. And it was almost as long as I was at that job, right? And then both of them ended like at the same time. Like yeah. the job ended, the relationship ended almost simultaneously, right? And I was like I just had like this decision to make, like what am I gonna do? Like, yeah. am I am I gonna like backpedal? Am I gonna like give up now? And like, I always I always understood and had this understanding where it's like, you never lose until you quit, right? right? Like, until you give up, you didn't necessarily lose. It's kind of like in sports. It's like you could be down thirty, but if there's time on the clock, you got a chance, right? Yeah, right. Obviously, there's there's one second left. <laughs> not yeah. not much happening, but um. Yeah, I always had that mentality and I and we'll get to the faith aspect, but I always yeah. had faith too. Yeah. Faith in what at the time, I'm not sure, but I had faith that everything would work out and I knew something would happen and I just yeah. never wanted to give up. So anyway, these things ended at the same time and I didn't know what I was going to do. Um I wasn't sure. It was that was probably one of the lowest points of my life. You know, I I thought I had everything like planned. I thought I had the future like figured out. Like, okay, this is gonna go like this, and this is gonna happen, and it all walk off into the sunset, right? Right. And then you know, so being a young man, like watching that like fade away, it was like, dang, this is tough. Like, yeah. Okay, like I gotta wrap my mind around that while I'll make decisions for my life and not allow myself to fall back you right. know and and lose momentum or whatever so i remember just using that time bro like i for the first time since i was a young kid like i didn't work for a couple like i didn't do anything for a couple months but i was just like i literally was just like reading books i was going on walks i was like i was meditating i was journaling like i was yeah, just doing yeah. all these things and i was like okay like i'm gonna just spend this time with myself like i'm gonna figure this out I didn't want to like, you know, some people get out of relationships and they go back into the streets and they go right. like run rampant and like do yeah. a bunch of stuff. And I knew I didn't want to do that. And same with the job thing. And I was like, bro, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I'm going to use this time for me and figure this out. And then um, 
a good friend of mine, same person I lived with in high school, Marcus, he literally called me and was like, hey, do you want to engineer at the studio? And I just said yes. And he was like, yeah. you don't want to know anything more? And I was like, because he knows how I am. Like, I ask questions. I, like, yeah. want to know details, who's going to be involved. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know if I like these people. Right, right. But I was like, no, yeah, I'm down. And, um, yeah, bro. And then just everything kind of, like, happened the way it did. I, I decided, I remember, I was, like I said, I was I was door dashing, bro. I was like, I'm going to just door dash and whatever. And whatever yeah. I got to do. But I'm not going back to this job. I'm not going back to this relationship. And I'm just going to go in this direction wherever it leads me. And then, like, the music thing happened. And then even when even when I, I, I had a place to do the the studio stuff, it was still just, okay, this is a place I'm going to make my music. Yeah. I'm going to make my music here. And that's, that's just what it's going to be. And then it was, like, I had people, good friends of mine that were already engineering down in L.A. And they were like, bro, why are you not... <laughs> why are you not engineering people right. why are you not doing sessions so i took i took my first session and then it's just been off to the races since then and and like you said it's like i was making progression over time but i was i also had school yeah i also had work i was also in a relationship so it was like my time was divided yeah in a lot of ways right and but music was i i made music all the time like there was a point in time where it was probably every single day for years right wow. like even if it was 30 minutes sometimes it was six hours and it like depending on what it was there was a time where it was like even when i wasn't making a lot of music i was still making music at least twice a week like yeah. it was very yeah. consistent my whole life and you would think i would make even better music but you know what i mean like all the time put in like you yeah, would think yeah but as soon as i was able to do it every single day all day long no time divided like i wasn't i didn't have this going on i didn't have to go here i just was at the studio all day long right yeah so that progression went from this much every year to like this much every week and okay. it was just like my 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 skill set just kept improving, kept improving. Yeah. And it was interesting because the skill set that I learned in hospitality, working at a resort ended up benefiting me working with people in with, within music, right? Like being able to talk with people, make people feel comfortable when they're in yeah. uncomfortable situations. Like right. people come in with songs that they're, it's, it's like a craft. So it's like, you're going to get nervous about making it and like yeah. making people feel comfortable and, and whatnot so the skills that i learned along the way ended up benefiting me later because like i said like i i chose to stay at that place stay at that job and grow within it and yeah part of it was like it was hospitality like you had to learn and you had to like actually like put yourself in situations to be hospitable you know right. and then that right. ended up benefiting me when it came to making music you know and because i have friends that are like Bro, how do you deal with these people all day? Yeah. Like, how do you deal with these kind of people? And not only that, but, like, so many different types of people every single day. Like, you d you never know what you're walking into. And it's like, you got to be able to adjust, I guess. Like, yeah. Because, it, it, like, I can get along with you, but if I can't get along with such and such, like, right. like it, where does that leave me? It's like, okay, I can only work with people I get along with. It's like, or you just figure out a way. Because people also say, like, Come on, bro. Not everybody makes good music. Like, yeah, this person right. is not that good, right? right and I'm like, right. no, like, I like their stuff. Like, it's just like finding a way to get along with people is like finding a way to enjoy people's craft. Yeah. You know, like, you could yeah. play me a genre of music that I don't listen to, but I'll find something in it to enjoy. For sure. Like, whether it's an instrument or a cadence or a flow or whatever, like, I'll find a way to enjoy it. And I think that's also like benefited the people that. I work with you know because it's hard to it's hard to like put into something when you don't want to be there you don't want to like painting a picture if you don't even want to paint whatever the outline drawing is it's like you don't you're not gonna want to do it yeah but if you're like sure. oh this painting is so cool like i want to make it as best as i can and i want to do whatever it is that i can do to make this look good it's the same with music if i'm just sitting there like Yo, this song sucks. Like, it's gonna be hard for me to make it better. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, so I like I, and I, you know, I think um, 
one one of the things that when we first met, uh, one of the things that like kind of drew me and I could pick up from you, and then in our conversations, I can just keep getting it from you is your is your heart for people. You know how much you care for people, how much you really want to help people, how much you just want to serve people. You know, and uh, that's like honestly something that I always that's that's what I get from you. And just hearing you explain just how you approach, uh, pr- you know, producing and because there's also people who, you know, especially in, in music who just they do it because c- they're just getting a paycheck out of it. Right. You know, like I don't see you as a person. I see you as X amount of dollars, you know. Mm-hmm. And so and, and that's not just for music with a- anything. anything. Yeah. And so uh, I think sure. it's I think it's really cool that, man, like the way you approach it is just more from a people aspect. Like you look for something to enjoy. Okay, how can I, how can I make, how can I make help them make this even better, um, help them improve the other things that maybe aren't as strong, um, and that's why now you're busy, man, and you just told me like you don't ever have to like text anybody about coming through. People are always hitting you up, you know, and I think it's because you're faithful with what God is giving you, not just the space and the job, but the people that come before you. I feel like if 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 Jesus uh, showed us in Scripture, he right he he was at the Last Supper with his disciples, and and he took off, he he grabbed a towel, and served the disciples, washed their feet, um, and that's what he he calls us to do is to serve the people that are around us, right? So like if mm-hmm. if we do that, regardless of whatever job we're working, like then there's no reason why God wouldn't grow you in that. You know what I mean? And so I think that that's probably the reason why you're so busy, man, is just because you're being faithful with the people God is bringing before you. And as long as you keep doing that, you're going to find success, you know, because that's what God, you know, that's why he puts us in the positions that we're in because, hey, you need to serve the people that are around you, right. you know? So with all that being Thank said, you, yeah, you. man, I, I really tr- truly believe that for you. With all that being said, I do want to get into the faith because Sir, it, I feel like it's it's that's what I came for. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I mean, honestly, dude. Like, I think um, I, I, and I'm really interested to hear this this part of your story because I feel like you're somebody that there are some people when they come to church and they find Jesus, it's 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 a relief, it's a a medicine to their illness, mm. to their sickness. Mm. But it's not a cure. Mm. With you, I feel like it's a it's truly a rebirth. Like it's truly a you have found life. Yeah. And so um tell me the story, bro. How in the world what what was it that brought you to church what was it that brought you to christ like f- as far as you can remember what were the things that pushed you in that direction yeah well it's such a it's such a like a the like it's such a weird story bro because like i could easily just start with last year mm-hmm. right i could easily just start there but as i grow in my faith and as i learn and 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 continue on this path right i realized how much stuff has benefited me from way long ago yeah that i had no idea like my search i was just like i was a kid just searching bro like i was just looking for this fulfillment like i didn't know that's what i was doing but i was just looking bro i was just like trying to find something and that was at, at a young age it was in in drugs and friendships and in music it was like looking for it in like all these certain places and you know i i look all the way back to like when i was when i was in high school when i was graduating high school that's when i started getting into like the new age spirituality stuff right okay bro i was 18 and i remember i i i I started meditating and a friend taught me about astral projection and i was doing psychedelics and i was i astral projected in my room at a front that friend's house that i was living at mm-hmm. and like in the spirit realm like at 18 years old like thinking i just accomplished like this major goal right yeah 
and then that led me down to like getting into crystals and getting into astrology and getting into like all these things and then that led me to and i really thought i was like onto something good right? right yeah but that also taught me a lot about like being positive having a positive mindset like for sure looking at things in a like glass half full not half empty and right. you know and then working in hospitality taught me about not you know it's not about me all the time that you know giving to other people and you know the law of reciprocity that if you have the chance to give more and receive less always give more right yeah, so like right. i took it as a way to grow and be a happy happy person and um but it was just now i learned it was through the wrong source it was through the wrong lens but the intention was right mm -hmm. so i say all that to say like i was growing in that way like that led me to like journaling all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I used to I used to journal all the time. Like back in like twenty twenty I started journaling and I would just like write. But it started with like affirmations, just like gratitude list. I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful yeah. for that. I'm grateful yeah. for my family. I'm grateful to be alive. But who was I saying I was grateful yeah, to? Right. Who yeah. was I talking to? Right. Like I look back now and I'm like, Oh wow. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like yeah. Who was I saying thank you to? Right. Like, I wasn't saying it to myself. Yeah. You know? And at the time, I didn't even think of it that that way, right? Yeah. So anyway, I was, you know, moving and grooving through life. And then I fast forward all the way to the studio. I started working with the artist. That artist was the only artist that ever gave me trouble, bro. Like, the only artist that I was like, get I would get out of my chair and be like, bro, do you want to do that? Like... You yeah. want to go ahead, bro. Like, do your thing. The only person that would frustrate me, and I have conversations with him about it today, and it's so funny, bro. And I had this, like, realization recently where it was, like, the one person that gave me trouble and made me frustrated. I never would get frustrated or nothing. Yeah. Was the one person that led me to Jesus. Wow. The one, like, God highlighted him. Yeah. And the one thing that would be whether it was frustration, uh, arguments, disagreements. And I wasn't like, I wasn't that way at all with yeah. anyone. Like, yeah. but God highlighted him in this way. And that same person ended up changing my life. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, I grew up smoking weed and doing, I wasn't really too much of a drinker, but I always, I smoked weed from a young, super young age. Like, yeah. First time I smoked, I was like, 12 or 13 you know yeah. I was super young got caught at school and did a bunch of dumb stuff anyway fast forward i smoked then all the way until i was like 24 like yeah. my whole life it was just something that i did and i remember i was 24 about to be 20 25 and like i just had this like weird feeling where it's like bro i gotta stop this like it ha this has to stop and I struggled with it for a long time. And one night, um, I remember I woke up the next day and I was like, bro, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore. So I just cold turkey, stopped smoking weed, stopped. And I smoked, it was like tobacco too. So it was like yeah. really that addictiveness from the tobacco. And yeah. it was just like a bad, a bad thing. But um, yeah, I just stopped smoking weed. I stopped drinking. And my artist zach was he was like a couple months later he's like you don't smoke anymore huh because i'd be outside smoking when he yeah, came go right. take a break smoke after like i was just like really addicted yeah and he was like you don't smoke anymore huh and i was like mm -mm. And yeah he was like what made you stop and i kind of like told him my story and he was like oh that's interesting you know so next next time he came to the studio we're talking you still not smoking? I was like, no, oh, bro. I, th I was like, I think I'm done forever. Like, yeah. like I just like for the first time in my life, I'm like, bro, like this feels good to just yeah. be like, yeah, clean, like and sober, you know? Yeah. And then you know we start having these conversations, and you know he starts bringing up God to me, and I was like, you know, that's kind of interesting because recently I just been watching these videos on YouTube, and they're like these motivational videos where it's like. 
when God has something planned for you, this will happen. Yeah. And it's like, you know, maybe Steve Harvey talking or something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I was really into those videos. Like yeah. at that time, like I was just like, I was just lit. They were like an hour and a half long videos and I'm just headphones in, just listening to them like on a walk or something, you know? Right. Yeah. And then I, I told him, I was like, bro, like there's these times where like I'll be by myself and I'm just talking and I'm just talking and talking and talking. And he's like, what do you say? And I gave him an example, and he was like, what if I told you you were praying? And I was like, I'd probably say you're crazy. You know, like, yeah. I didn't, because I was like, I don't even know what praying is, right. you know? Like, I, I'm not, like, I think I know, like, yeah, you you talk to God, but I didn't know what that really, truly meant. Right. So I was like, uh, I don't think so, bro. He's like, nah, for I think you're, you're praying, bro. Like, if you change a couple words, you're praying. And I was like, yeah. Huh, I never thought of that, right? So that kind of opened that up. And he was like, bro, I just started going to this church a couple months ago. He was like, you should you should come with me. Yeah. I was like, church? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, bro, no, I'm not yeah. going to church. I yeah. was like, these are nice conversations, but I'm not going to church, bro. Right. Like, yeah. I was like, thank you, though, you know? Yeah. And then, um, but he was just so, like, kind about it. He was like, all right. Yeah. For sure. like, yeah. Like, all right. And then... Um, you know, next maybe that next week he he calls me. Hey, bro, you know, just wanted to invite you again. To, you should come through tonight and I'll, yeah. or on Sunday. And I was like, I'm busy, bro. You yeah. know, I used to always hit him with that. Oh, yeah. oh, I'm busy. I'm in the studio or I'm doing right. this. Next week, same thing. Next week, same thing. Like he was so consistent for like over a month, bro. It was like from the minute he asked me to to when I actually said I would go was over a month, and Jeez. and it was. So he was never like, bro. Da -da 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 -da. He was yeah. just like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. Well, I hope you can make it next week. Yeah. And then, you know, because I was just, I was so busy, bro. I'd be going to bed at like four in the morning. Yeah. You know, like most nights, like sometimes I'd go to bed at like eight in the morning. You know what I mean? Like there was, there was a lot of that. And um, so I was like, how am I even gonna do that? So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm not going to come this week, but I'll come next week. Yeah. But I wasn't going for me. I was like, this man is so persistent. <laughs> he loves it so much. And he's like, see something that I don't see. Right. I'll, I'll pull up just for him, just yeah. to satisfy him. So I could tell him I didn't enjoy it. And I can, you know what yeah, I mean? Go on, on about my day and he could right. stop calling my phone, for you sure. know? And we could just make music like we usually do. Isn't that amazing to have friends that just... They won't give up on you. They're never going to leave you alone. They're always going to be there for you, always pushing you to be the best version of yourself or push you to things that are only going to help you. Man, his friend really was persistent, didn't let up. And so on next week's episode, we're going to find out what Jay's experience was going into church after saying yes to his friend. And uh, guys, the second half of this episode is great. We really get into his faith, him finding Jesus, how his life has changed since. And uh, I'm really excited for y'all to check it out. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's episode. As always, I hope you have a great week. I love you guys. Peace out.